Gary Cahill is here, and he's come to see you on his birthday. So when he comes through, I want you all to sing happy birthday to Gary. Can you do that? Okay, so please welcome to the Junior Member Press Conference, Brandon Pierrick and Gary Cahill. Right, guys, here's your microphone if you share that between you two. What is the worst and best thing about being a football player? I'll start with the worst thing. There's not many, to be honest. It's a, it's a fantastic job, I would say. Maybe this time of year, you're always training and playing around Christmas, so don't really have too much time to spend with the family around Christmas, usually. And the best thing is playing in front of you guys, going out, playing in front of crowds, and, and trying to win games, trying to win football matches. So it's a dream come true for most of us. And we know that we're in a privileged position to, to play football for a living, so yeah, it's the best job going, I think. For me, I would say the, the hardest thing will probably be waking up in the morning. <laughs> yeah, hard one, but obviously the best, the best thing about being a footballer is basically just going out there, doing your family proud and just enjoying what you do. Hello, my name is Andrew and I've got a question for you. If you were not a footballer, what job do you think you would have done? Not a clue. Uh, not a clue. I'm, I'm pretty active, so I'd, I'd like to do something that's uh, yeah, probably active. So I don't know if it'd be maybe working in a gym or I, I've, no, I've no idea. It's hard for me to answer that question because ever since I was at school, I always was, was focused. I wanted to, to do that. Understanding that education is important, obviously. Uh, but at the same time, I always had a focus of playing football, so I weren't really sure what else I would do. I'd probably take up athletics because um, obviously I'm fast, so I think... I think I would do well in like 100 metres and stuff like that. He's definitely fast, faster than me anyway. So. What was on your Christmas list when you were a child and did you get it? I always put down some trainers because obviously when I was younger, I couldn't, I couldn't get all the trainers I wanted because my mum never really had the money. Back then, I just used to ask for one pair and I always used to get it and I was just so proud because it was the shoes that I wanted. So. I'd always put down trainers when I was younger. I'd probably say um, a computer game. Um, I think one that stands out was Aladdin for the Super Nintendo, which about half of you guys won't even know what a Super Nintendo is, I don't think. That's why I'm showing my age today, but you do. Do you? Yeah, so uh, Super Nintendo is equivalent to probably a PlayStation nowadays, but yeah, a computer game for that. When you were a child, who was your inspiration to become a footballer? My inspiration was, I was grew up, sorry, in Sheffield. Um, so I used to go and watch Sheffield Wednesday quite often with my dad. Um, and at the time, there was a player called Chris Waddle who used to play there. He was a centre midfielder. Um, at the time, Sheffield Wednesday was in the Premier League. And he played for England as well. So for me growing mm -hmm. up, I always wanted to, to play. In the, I looked at him as an inspiration to me because I thought, you know, he's, he's playing in the Premier League and he's playing for his country as well. So... For me, there wasn't much better than that. I think it's fair to say, growing up, everyone wanted to be like Ronaldo. So I'd probably say I was watching him when I was younger. I wanted to be like him, the way he strikes free kicks, the way he, how many goals he was scoring. I just wanted to, I wanted to be like him in a way. So I definitely looked up to him when I was younger. What meal do you like to eat before a big game? I like to eat um, chicken and pasta, definitely. That's a go-to meal for, for us as players, I think. Um, a lot of energy in, in that meal, so yeah, chicken and pasta for me. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Some, some form of pasta in your body and you're good to go. So I definitely agree with that. What has been your most memorable Palace moment since playing for the club? I think for me, I've obviously not been here too long, so I would say my debut at Manchester United away. Um, obviously a hard place to go and to go and get a win for, for any team. So for us to go there and win away from home, especially with it being my debut as well, um, that was my, my standout game so far. Even my debut game in pre-season against Wimbledon, where I scored two, or signing my professional contract a couple, a couple of days ago, them two, them two memories definitely stand out for me because they're two big things for me as I'm still young. So, yeah, them two, them two sit with me very well. 
What's your favourite Christmas movie? Easy one for me, Home Alone. <laughs> all day long, Home Alone. Home Alone, yeah, Home Alone. All, f all three, nah, actually. The first one and the second one. I don't really like the third one. <laughs> Hello, we're called Mason and Dylan. Hello. Can you remember a moment that you realised you wanted to play football professionally? Um. Uh, yeah, I, I think so, yeah. I think that at first you just play for enjoyment. Certainly I did. I just used to play for enjoyment. I love playing, training, playing my friends, uh, most of all from school. Probably, probably the first time was when I got my first professional contract. Uh, at 16, I was only on YTS, but then I went to train with the, in the same kind of building as the first team then. And you saw how they was living their life, what they did. You went to watch the games and see them play in front of, like I said earlier, um, you know, all these crowds, 30, 40,000 people. And that was the moment when I thought, yeah, this is, this is definitely what, what I want to do for a living. So. I think when I it started off in a park, and obviously I used to have pick rounds in the park with my mates, and there used to be like 20 of us, and obviously we'd play, like, we'd play small sided games. And like, I don't want to really disrespect them, but I always used to like, I always used to stand out, so I sort of knew from then that I wanted to take this seriously. And then obviously, Palace came, and then I, I signed with them as soon as I could, and then I got started at like nine. And then I just always knew that football was something I wanted to do. So, yeah, them, them memories, their memories are sit, they sit with me still to this day. So. What is your favourite bit of training? What bit of training helps you the most when you play a game? I think um, I think you can't get away from the, like the small side of games when you play games, and you're playing against obviously top players and, 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 and trying to defend in my position, players like this man here, and, and you know it brings your game on. So I think for me, in, in small side of games, you can adapt everything that you want to do on a weekend, you know. So I think probably that probably probably that's the the main thing. Um, yes, small side again because it gives you that. Yeah, it gives you some sort of freedom that we don't normally have because m most of the time we're, it's more ta tactical stuff. So when we when when the gaffer will, will say that we have a small side game, everyone will be buzzing because we don't really do that often. So when we do it, everything comes alive, all the tricks come out, and everyone just enjoys themselves. So definitely small side games. What's the best piece of advice you would give to an aspiring footballer? The best piece of advice I'd give is to enjoy what you're doing, um, keep your eyes open and learn off people that are better than you. And I think in, in that sense, you, you learn off, off older people, you learn off people who have maybe done a little bit more than you, and you see how and why they've got there. Um, but as well, you, you enjoy, enjoy, you put a smile on your face, enjoy what you're doing, I think that's important. You always play your best football when you're happy. Definitely, definitely work hard work hard and also to stay humble. You always have to stay humble in everything you're doing. You don't want to seem big headed because that's when people sort of turn on you. So stay humble and just just keep keep going, keep working hard and you'll get you'll get there. What does your daily diet consider of? Some sort for me personally, some sort of eggs in the morning. Um I try and eat well. My main meals I try and eat well. But we, we train quite a lot so we, we probably eat quite a lot as well. And maybe some biscuits at night, but don't tell the guys over there. Um, me, it's definitely an omelette in the morning. An omelette in the morning. Omelette with some fruits, grapes, precisely. Precisely grapes and, and water. And then, obviously, the, we finish trading and then lunch. So, if I see chicken there, then I'm happy. I'm eating it. What would you consider was the best game of the season? I'd have to say I have to go back to the same the same answer. I think Manchester United away was was one of the best ones for me. I'm trying to think of another one, so I don't say the same. But there's been I think you'll agree there's been quite a few good uh, performances this season and and quite a few important wins. Um, but I think in terms of the big team, you know Manchester United a victory at Old Trafford is is a highlight. Um, this season I would say the Bournemouth game. Because obviously the boys showed character, they showed resilience, going ten, going ten men down, going to, with ten men, and obviously 
they worked hard, they done the hard stuff off the ball and on the ball and obviously they won the game, so definitely that game. Who's the best player you've played with? Well, you played with in, in football in general. Oh, wow. Um, I've been lucky enough to play with quite, you know, with, with many good footballers for England and for well, my, my club teams. Um, I think somebody that stands out is Eden Hazard for me. Somebody who was just blessed with unbelievable natural ability um, to go past players, to beat players and to turn a game on its head. So, um, like I said, there's many in that list, but I just, I just chose one in, in him. That's, yeah, probably Wilf. When he gets going, it's really hard. It's really hard to stop him. And when he does this, the, the skills, you just pray that he doesn't, he doesn't make you or just embarrass you. So, yeah, I definitely say Wolf. Wolf is up there. What would your elf name be if you were one? My elf name. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Have you got a suggestion for me what you think my elf name could be? No, you're not, not helping me out now. Anyone else? Change Gary Gayhill into something weird. Oh, no, I have no idea. Gaz on the shelf. Gaz on the shelf, elf. I have not got a clue. Oh, my days. Um... Yeah, we'll come back to that one. On a match day, do you feel the fans as a top man? Yeah, definitely. And I'm not just saying that. I think the fans here are terrific. I think you've got um, you know, a good few sections of the crowd that make it very vocal. Um, and for us, that's, that always helps, trust me. It's difficult sometimes when the, if, you, if you feel that you're in, you're in a bad moment. And sometimes, rightly so, the fans get frustrated. And that's a difficult moment as for a player. Um, when the fans are, are cheering and shouting and, and, che and cheering you on. Not only for us, it, it spurs us on as players, but also for the for the the opposition, it's um, it's a bit of a hindrance for them as well. So no, definitely. The fans definitely keep you going. They keep you going. They all, they give you that that boost, that boost, that that boost of confidence, motivation to just win the game. So yeah, they pay they they help a lot in that in that sense. Who is the funniest player in the changing room? I'd say Mac at McCarthy. Yeah, he's always joking about and he's never serious. Um, he's serious when we play, but I've, I've away from that, he's always messing about and, and making people laugh in the changing room. So I would say him. Either Mac or Pat Van Anok. I'm just saying Pat because he's every every morning he's just so loud. So. He'll like he'll spark up your day in a way because of his pre because of his presence. So if you're feeling down, then he'll find a way of putting a smile on your face with just his with just his presence being there. So. Who is your favourite team to play and why? I quite like playing against West Ham. Um, probably because I've scored a couple of goals. I don't normally score too many goals, so I've, I've scored a few in the past against West Ham. So I would probably say his is yet to come. I'm sure. I'm sure you'll see plenty of this guy soon. Who is the last of the training pitch? I'd say there's probably there's a few there's a few good professionals at our club who who practice extra. The strikers like to stay out. Jordan likes to stay out. Generally, the strikers like to stay out and practice their shooting. Um, but there's quite a few good professionals. If, if we're not out practicing football, then we're in the gym trying to get um, you know strong and strengthen up in the right areas. So yeah, maybe the forwards they do they like to stay out and do a lot of shooting. So I think that's partly by because they enjoy it and it's fun, and partly to to master their their craft. Um, yeah, I definitely say the forwards, even Luca. To be fair, Luca stays out and does a lot. He does a lot of shooting. He does a, yeah. He does a lot of free kicks. So mainly the forwards and Luca. For Brandon Pierre, the first time he's answered questions in front of this many people. How well did he do? It's good, right? And for Gary Cahill for coming in on his birthday to come and see you guys. A big cheer for Gary Cahill. So, can I just say as well, thank you for the welcome. And also, I just want to wish you, on behalf of, you know, Crystal Palace in general, I just want to wish all you, you guys a Merry Christmas. Hope you have a, a smashing time. 
and enjoy every moment with the family. So, Merry Christmas.